Most melting occurs during the dry season, which is important since this coincides with decreased precipitation. As a result, water is made available from glaciers when it is most in demand. The central Andes display fairly moist conditions at higher altitudes, while the coastal lowlands experience extremely arid conditions. Thus, the further one travels down Peru's mountain slopes, the more important glacier runoff becomes. Although the impacts from climate change are still uncertain for many parts of the world, alpine regions in tropics and subtropics are already experiencing the ramifications of climate change. Studies conducted on tropical glaciers reveal that they are particularly sensitive to climatic changes. Climate in the tropical Andes has undergone measurable changes over the past 50 years, with an observed temperature increase of approximately 0.1 degrees Celsius per decade with a general temperature increase of 0.68 degrees Celsius from 1939 to 2008. A limited number of modeling studies conducted in the region indicate that warming will continue throughout the 21st century, suggesting further warming of approximately 2 to 4 degrees Celsius. Following the IPCC's special report on emission scenarios A2, Scientists project that the tropical Andes may even experience extreme warming, on the order of 4.5 to 5 degrees Celsius. Warming of this magnitude suggests that an additional 30 to 50 percent of existing mountain glacier mass could disappear by 2100. In addition to the increase in temperature, changes in precipitation are of equal concern, especially in the Peruvian Andes where rain-fed agriculture supports a large part of the population. There are several limiting factors when it comes to assessing precipitation in the Andes, however. Precipitation records are low in quality and have not been collected systematically, hindering detailed assessments of long-term trends. Researchers have been able to identify a small increase in precipitation during the latter half of the 20th century. Perhaps of more importance though, are the projected increases in seasonal variability, including the timing and amount of precipitation in both the wet and dry seasons. Variations in climate are commonly linked to glacier advances and retreats. Despite some transient advances, glaciers in the Cordillera Blanca have shown continued recession since the mid-19th century. Every glacier has an accumulation zone, where it gains mass, predominantly from snow, and an ablation zone where it loses mass to evaporation, sublimation and melting. The annual equilibrium line altitude, ELA, delimits these two zones, above which accumulation exceeds ablation. A loss can be understood through changes in temperature and precipitation, increased temperature and decreased precipitation causes the ELA to ascend, and decreased temperature and increased precipitation causes the ELA to descend. Persistent rising of the ELA of glaciers in the tropical Andes has been documented in recent decades, by as much as 300 meters in some cases. Glaciers of the Cordillera Blanca lost 22.4% of their area from 1970 to 2003. Due to higher temperature increases at lower elevations, much of this loss has been in small, low-lying glaciers. In addition to implications of precipitation and temperature, atmospheric humidity also influences melting and sublimation. A decrease in atmospheric humidity is thought to be one of the major reasons for glacier retreat throughout the tropics at the end of the Little Ice Age. Studies suggest that in the 1930s and 1940s, temperature accounted for one-third of glacier retreat in the Cordillera Blanca while factors promoting decreased humidity accounted for the remainder. Ultimately, accelerated recession since the 1980s is attributed to increased air temperature and increased air humidity. Observations show that humidity increases during the wet season are particularly responsible for elevated melt rates. In general, however, Quality atmospheric humidity records are absent for the Peruvian Andes and most studies suggest that temperature has greater relevance to glacier mass balance. Glacier mass balance is clearly sensitive to changes in both temperature and moisture, and these are also tied to climatic anomalies such as the El Niño Southern Oscillation, ENSO. ENSO is identified as the largest influence on interannual variability of weather patterns and climate fluctuations on the global climate regime. As a result of INSO on interannual climate variability in the Andes, mass balance is greatly influenced by Pacific Sea Surface Temperature SSD, anomalies and their impact on precipitation. Due to warmer SSDs in the Pacific, the El Niño period is typically warmer as well as drier. INSO events have been linked to significant negatives in mass balance, which is attributed to low precipitation, low albedo, and as a result, increased radiation exposure. 
La Nina periods are characterized by cold temperatures and more abundant snowfall, during which glaciers usually experience balanced or positive mass balances. Pacific SSD anomalies in the tropics induce large-scale forcing on interannual time scales, resulting in negative mass balance during El Niño years and above average results during La Niña years. Changes in the upper tropospheric flow aloft associated with INSO conditions determine snowfall magnitude during the wet season, thus, impacting mass balance. This teleconnection mechanism is spatially unstable and oscillates latitudinally along the subtropical Andes and affects the Cordillera Blanca in most, but not all years. Therefore, the connection between INSO and glacier mass balance in the Cordillera Blanca features inconsistencies which have occurred more frequently since the 1970s, when El Niño and La Niña events featured above average mass balances and negative mass balances, illustrating that glaciers in the region are altered through the INSO events. In addition, climate model research regarding the impacts on climate change on INSO occurrences suggest climate change will promote an increased frequency of INSO events along with increased intensity which is expected to be a further detriment to glacier mass balance and seasonal water availability in the future. The effects of climate change are underway in the Peruvian Andes and many of the Cordillera Blanca smaller glaciers are projected to disappear within a few decades. Current and projected warming trends combined with the observed changes in glaciers thus far suggest that the retreat of the Cordillera Blanca's glaciers will continue unabated. It is believed that regardless of any mitigation measures the international community takes now to reduce the impacts of climate change, low-altitude glaciers will not be able to recover. This continued retreat will alter runoff patterns, the timing of discharge, and will decrease water availability during the dry season. Thus, Declines in glaciers will create significant uncertainty and vulnerability for the region's water supplies and the tens of millions of highland communities and lowland urban dwellers who depend on them. Such drastic changes in the Andean highlands are fundamentally altering the relationship between subsistence communities and their surroundings. The impacts are often noticeable, as retreating glaciers leave once white mountains exposed, the black slopes a stark indicator of fundamental change to alpine environments. These biophysical changes are at the heart of a time of drastic shifts in the ecological and social fabric of life in the Andean highlands. Of great importance is an understanding of the mechanisms and factors that shape vulnerability in these communities.